Rhapsody, and today we'll be making a red wine blackberry apple jam. Our ingredients include blackberries, a red wine locally sourced, an apple, organic, sugar, and pectin. Our first step that we need to do is get our jars ready for jamming. Part of the sanitation process for the jars means that we need to boil them in order to get them properly sanitized. Now this recipe normally makes about six eight ounce jars. I've got seven just in case we have a little left over to make sure that all the jam gets jarred properly. While our jars are coming to a boil, we'll want to go ahead and prepare our apple. First we'll want to wash it in the sink. Then we'll go ahead and peel our apple. Then we'll take it to the cutting board and cut it into small chunks, making sure that you remove the core. We don't want any of those yucky seeds in there. And then we'll put it in our pan with four tablespoons of water and cook it until it's soft. Now that our jars have come to a boil, we'll go ahead and set a timer for 10 minutes to let us know that in 10 minutes, our jars will be ready to be used for jamming. The wine I've selected today is a 2014 Moto Red Wine. I've selected it from the tasting room at Pike Place Market, which is a wine co-op. This particular wine was made in Seattle and is only distributed locally in Seattle although the grapes were sourced from Columbia Valley. This particular wine is also low in tannins. Unlike a Merlot, which is dry, this tends to air a little bit more on the sweet side. Okay. Our timer is going off, which means that our jars are ready. We'll go ahead and turn off the stove and leave our jars in the water until we're actually ready to go ahead and use them to place our jam in and have jam in jars. I placed our apples into our pot for the jam, and now we'll go ahead and add the rest of our ingredients. Our two pounds of blackberries from summer. We have five cups of sugar, four and a half tablespoons of pectin, and one and a half cups of wine. Now before placing our wine into the pot, we'll need to take out at least one ounce of the wine to add in after the jam is completed. One ounce means two tablespoons. Once removing one ounce, we'll go ahead and add our wine into the pot. Then we'll go ahead and stir our ingredients. Once our sugar is dissolved, we'll go ahead and add our candy thermometer and bring our pot to a slow boil to get to a setting point of 219 degrees Fahrenheit or 104 degrees Celsius. Now while you're waiting for it to reach setting point, patience is a virtue. It definitely does take a little bit of time uh, more so than you would think for it to get to that last little bit of temperature of 219 degrees. You know that you're getting close to your setting point when it starts to look like this, boiling lava. Now that our jam has reached its setting point of 219 degrees, we'll go ahead and proceed with our wrinkle test. You want to make sure that you turn off the stove top before proceeding with the wrinkle test to make sure that you don't overcook your jam. I'm doing a very small portion of the jam primarily trying to get the liquid to make sure that we can do a proper wrinkle test to see if our jam is ready to go. Now that I have a small portion on a plate, I'll go ahead and place it into the refrigerator and set a timer for two minutes. And now we wait. While we're waiting for the wrinkle test to complete, we'll go ahead and pull out our jars and make sure that they're ready to go to begin placing jam into them. A second towel would be good for this process to make sure that you don't burn your hands on the hot jars. Uh, using a, the magnetic stick, it allows me to pick up the jar lids without having to use my own hands, which would desanitize them and defeat the whole process we've done so far. Now that our timer's gone off for the wrinkle test, we'll go ahead and pull out our plate. And you'll stick your finger into the jam. You notice how the jam wrinkles up, which means our jam is ready to go. Uh, so I've gone ahead and poured the last ounce of wine into the jam to ensure that there's actually just a little bit of wine that hasn't been cooked out in the jam. I have this handy funnel which will allow me to keep me from getting jam everywhere while I'm trying to put everything in the jar. Um, so I need to make sure that I fill the jar up uh, to where the lid would be twisted on. Now that I've filled all of my jars with jam, I will carefully grab each of the lids without touching them with my actual hands and make sure that I place them on top of the jar and tighten just enough so that it's just on there and not too tight. We'll go ahead and place them back into the same pot of water they were in when we were sanitizing them to make sure that they seal properly. 
once the water comes to a boil, you'll need to let them boil for two minutes and then you'll be able to remove them from the water and allow them to begin cooling down, which at that point, the top will pop down. You will actually hear the pop and that'll let you know that it has properly sealed. Now it usually takes about 24 to 48 hours for the jam inside the jar to congeal and to be ready for consumption. In this situation with the magic of television, I already have some jam. The best way I think to consume it is with a little bit of local goat cheese and of course a little bit of our jam. 